Today's talk is on clarity, what we mean by clarity on the Buddhist path. I believe it's like washing the windows of your house, washing them so clean that there's not a speck of dust. You can see out the windows very well. If we apply this to human beings, the windows are the senses, the sense gates. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, uh, body, mind. And when they're washed clean, clarity arises. One kind of clarity that we human beings uh, pay a lot of attention to is the clarity we look for when we're solving a a math problem, or when we're trying to figure out a computer problem. It's about logic and reason. And, of course, when we figure it out, we're happy. Maybe it's an idea. Another way to think of this is that it's an idea that we get clear about. How to sew a dress, how to bake a pie, how to live a good life. We're also quite drawn to this kind of clarity, the clarity of the thinking mind. We get educated to use it, and the self thrives on it. The Buddha said these, this kind of clarity, this kind of thinking, the thinking that includes who am I or what is the meaning of life, I, are, are areas that the, and a form that the human being, the self, grabs onto. It makes us feel important and uh, competent. But these are unanswerable questions, questions that can't be known by direct experience. They're mostly the play of the mind. There's another kind of clarity, and I want to tell you a story to illustrate it. It's about a time that I learned how to scuba dive. I took a class, got on a boat, put on all of the trappings, the flippers, the, the uh, the tank on back, on my back, uh, the goggles, uh, the mouthpiece, all of that, sat on the rim of the boat and tumbled down. I got to the bottom, sandy, a little murky, and I got concerned, I got worried that I would lose the boat. So I grabbed onto a piece of coral and I did my best. I was strongly determined to stand vertically. I could manage it a little bit. It took a huge amount of energy. And then a grouper came by, a rather big grouper, and he hung out for a while. And I noticed with my eyes, that he flipped his fin just a little bit to maintain his position. And my body responded. I let go, and I just swayed back and forth in the water with a little, a little movement of my flippers. And I was fairly close to the group and to the boat. So there was a learning there, a clarity. And the clarity was in the, body, the sense, the body, the sense gate of the body. A little while later, after I came up, uh, on the boat again, uh, my mind got busy, and my mind thought, oh, look at that. The grouper taught me something. And I listened, or I heard, or I saw. 
And that story has stayed with me for a long time. Now, what happened was that the self, so used to being the leader, so used to being the one in control, took over the experience. The, the grouper said, I saw the grouper and learned and changed my behavior. It felt good. I was in control. Thoughts like this, thoughts of the self, can be thought of as dust. The dust that interferes with clarity. It wasn't the self that learned, except secondarily, it was the body. On the Buddhist path, it's the sense gates, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, mind, that are washed until they're free of the dust that clouds reality. In each case, it helps us to let loose, let free of the dust, which we might also call habit energy. For instance, it is a habit, good habit, to stand vertically when you're in, on, standing on hard earth. But it's a habit. When I went into the water, I needed to develop a new approach to how I managed my body. In that case, the dust went away and I was able to do it. So, another kind of clarity is a clarity of the senses. And you could look at each of the senses in the same way, looking for how you get clarity. What is it to see without the habit energy, for instance, of choosing what you tend to choose, what you tend to see? What is it with smell? What is it with taste? We all have our tastes that we dislike. Well, it tends to be habit. If we're clear, if we let go of the habit, we can have many experiences of taste that we've never thought of before. So that's a second kind of clarity, clarity of the senses. There's another reality, and this is a reality that goes beyond the senses. In this form, on the Buddhist path, we move through the senses to a world of no seeing, no hearing, no tasting, no smelling, no feeling, no thinking we move to what we call emptiness. Emptiness. This is described in the Heart Sutra, which is about prajna par, the perfection of wisdom or insight. You might call it clarity. It begins with the phrase, form is emptiness, emptiness is form. Emptiness means that things do not exist as they seem. They do not have a core existence. As Thich Nhat Hanh says, that's true, they do not have a core existence because we inter-are in an interdependent universe. So we sit, and slowly, our senses begin to feel clear. Perhaps we're less tied to believing the self is solid. Maybe we feel that there is no self that exists independently. And then the dust blows in again, and everyday life comes back. Or, returning to my relationship with a grouper and the clarity that arose, after the dive was over, I returned to the boat, got back into air, and my body rather quickly reoriented itself back to its old vertical habit. 
the dust was back in place. In this practice of ours, we touch the emptiness again and again. And each time, there's a little less dust. <laughs>